On March 14th, SpaceX's Starship embarked on its third test flight from the Starbase facility in South Texas, marking another significant milestone in the development of what is currently the largest rocket ever built. This flight was particularly noteworthy for its demonstration of orbital velocity achievement and other key capabilities that are crucial for future lunar missions, especially within the framework of NASA's Artemis program, which aims to return humans to the moon and beyond. One of the highlights of this test flight was the propellant transfer demonstration, an essential capability for sustaining longer missions in space by allowing spacecraft to refuel while in orbit. This technology is of particular interest to NASA as it aligns with the goals of the Artemis program by potentially extending the reach and duration of human exploration missions. The success of such a demonstration could pave the way for more ambitious missions, including those targeting the Moon, Mars, and possibly other destinations in the solar system. Before the launch, the teams conducted thorough final checks on weather conditions at T-60 minutes. Given the favorable conditions, the launch director proceeded with the propellant loading process, filling the Starship and its super-heavy booster with liquid methane and liquid oxygen. This process, completed by T-45 minutes, is critical, not only because of the technical requirements, but also due to the sheer volume of propellant involved. The Super Heavy's 33 Raptor engines, upon ignition, consumed around 40,000 pounds of propellant per second. At T plus 2 minutes and 44 seconds, the stage separation occurred. This was executed flawlessly, with most of the booster engines shutting down except for three, allowing for a controlled separation. Immediately after, the upper stage's six engines ignited, marking the start of its journey to orbit. During its ascent, the booster initiated a boost-back burn, reorienting itself for a return to Earth. This maneuver was captured in incredible detail by the onboard cameras, showcasing the booster's controlled descent and re-entry preparations. As the booster approached the Gulf of Mexico, it performed a landing burn, aiming for a soft splashdown. Although the feed was lost shortly before landing, this maneuver is critical for SpaceX's vision of reusable rockets. The launch generated significant attention, not only for its visual spectacle with the water suppression system at the launch pad, but also for the critical technologies being tested. The stability of Starship during this operation is paramount, as any adverse effects could jeopardize the mission's success. NASA and SpaceX engineers will review the flight data in detail to assess the performance of the propellant transfer. They are particularly interested in the fluid dynamics within the tanks and the conditions under which the Raptor engines receive the propellant. This analysis is crucial for ensuring the engines can be reliably restarted in orbit. However, the test flight was not without its challenges. During the coast phase, unexpected vehicle roll rates necessitated abandoning a planned on-orbit relight of a single Raptor engine. Despite losing the vehicle during this phase, the data gathered until the loss of signal provided SpaceX with valuable insights. The live feed showed the heat shield tiles and the effects of re-entry. SpaceX has a plan to launch five starships in 2024. With one already launched on March 14th, four more launches are expected in the remaining eight months, equating to one launch every two months. This schedule might be challenging due to the lengthy preparation needed for each launch. However, SpaceX is expanding its launch sites to help manage this tight timeline. At the forefront of this expansion efforts is the construction of a massive new facility at the Starbase Complex in Brownsville, Texas. Musk has announced a $100 million investment into a large-scale five-story industrial complex. The proposed Starbase office complex is set to cover an area equivalent to 15 football fields. For context, this size is about a quarter of Boeing's largest assembly building, where the 777 aircraft are built. According to the Texas Department of Licensing and Regulation, the project aims to enhance SpaceX's manufacturing, with construction slated to start soon, and a completion target set for early 2025. This new facility will include office space and a dedicated factory for the Starship project, covering more than 1.3 million square feet in total.
The project's location near the launch site adds logistical convenience, supporting the increased pace of production and launch operations. While SpaceX is making headlines with one achievement after another, its competitors, including Blue Origin, are struggling with their own challenges. Both companies were founded in the early 2000s by two of the wealthiest individuals on the planet, Musk and Jeff Bezos. Moreover, both companies have been developing heavy lift vehicles. SpaceX has developed the Starship, a fully reusable spacecraft designed to carry humans to Mars and beyond. It has already conducted three test flights of its Starship vehicle. These test flights, despite not all ending in success, have provided invaluable data to further refine and improve the design of the spacecraft. In contrast, Blue Origin has been working on its New Glenn rocket, a heavy lift vehicle designed for orbital missions. Despite being in development for several years, Blue Origin has yet to conduct a test flight of New Glenn. Alongside Blue Origin's struggles to keep up, United Launch Alliance is also facing financial challenges and is potentially going to be sold to another company soon. There's talk about who might buy ULA, including a surprising idea that SpaceX could be interested. This seems unlikely at first glance, because SpaceX is already a big player in the market, and buying a competitor like ULA would be complicated. But this idea is out there because the other three companies mentioned as possible buyers, Blue Origin, Cerberus, and Textron, might not be ready to pay so much for ULA. On the practical side, if SpaceX were to buy ULA, it could mean less competition for SpaceX. In business, it's not unusual for bigger companies to buy smaller ones to reduce competition and risk. By acquiring ULA, SpaceX could control more of the market, which could lead to setting better prices and schedules for their launches. Also, buying ULA could give SpaceX access to ULA's contracts with the U.S. government and military, which are very valuable. This would not only bring more business to SpaceX, but also make its income more stable and diverse. Furthermore, SpaceX could benefit from ULA's technology and experience. ULA is known for its reliable and precise launches, so SpaceX could improve its own services by using ULA's technology and know-how. And that's all for today's update. If you enjoyed watching and found it useful, please make sure to subscribe to our channel and hit the like button. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.